Now I've made a whole bunch of Switch videos since you guys respond so well to the stuff. I love it too, but there's no question that there's some key features that are missing that could bring this from an A-ranked console to an S-ranked console. Here's nine things that the Nintendo Switch desperately needs. Right off the bat, let's talk about probably the most important omission. The Virtual Console. What the hell's taking so long? Every Nintendo console that's had native internet connectivity has had a marketplace where you can buy retro Nintendo games and even some Sega classics. I would buy so many games just to have them in a portable form factor. I already bought Mega Man X on my 3DS. I would buy it again. I shouldn't have to, but I would. The Switch is powerful enough to play pretty much the entire backlog of Nintendo games. The most powerful stuff we got was on the Wii U, and the Switch could play that stuff. Since that system still isn't really old, I don't expect to be getting Wii U stuff in the same way, but there's no reason we can't get virtual console stuff leading all the way up to the Wii era. It's rumored that we'll finally be seeing GameCube stuff in the Switch's virtual console, starting with Super Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Mansion, and Super Smash Bros. Melee. The virtual console is being developed by Nintendo European Research and Development, who also brought us the software on the NES Mini, but there's no release date yet. You know what would make virtual console a whole lot easier? A unified account system. If I buy Mega Man X on my 3DS, why can't I have it on my Switch? The same should go for cross-platform games like Shovel Knight. The PlayStation ecosystem has this in the form of cross-buy. I bought Titan Souls once on my Vita and can bounce between my Vita and PS4 seamlessly. It's fantastic. You know what isn't fantastic? Trying to transfer your data between Nintendo consoles or even just logging into multiple Nintendo consoles. Nintendo is trying this console generation, but it just isn't enough. It's like almost a step forward, but not even. It's 2017. You need to get better at this stuff. Why are all my purchases tied to the console, not my account? That's stupid. I have all of my stuff digitally. What happens if I lose my console? I'm just screwed? You can't even transfer save files. All of those would just be gone forever. I mentioned that I don't expect Wii U games in the virtual console, but I would like to see a Wii U collection for the Switch. We've already got Mario Kart 8. Give us some more of the best, like Mario Maker, goddammit! Bayonetta and Smash Bros would be nice too. I've seen this image floating around online and I love it. Make this a reality. Mario Kart 8 will be out very soon and is probably out by the time you're seeing this. You can play with your friends, but can you talk to them? No, of course not. Why would you even think that you could do that? The Switch doesn't have any sort of voice chat. There's a voice chat app that is coming this fall for smart devices, so you can use your phone to talk to your friends. In that case, why do we even have the stupid app? Why don't we just use our phones? Is it really so hard to just let us connect a headset to the headphone jack? Nintendo's response is that, well, it doesn't have 4G connectivity, so when you're out and about, you won't be able to talk to your friends anyway. But you can't play games online when you're out and about either. Just give me voice chat on the console. The screen on the Switch is a thick plastic. I actually like this because it's more durable that way. This thing is a tank. If you drop it on its face, the Joy-Cons act as some sort of bumper. However, the dock of all things is made so poorly that it's been known to scratch the front screen. We trusted you to keep our console safe. And you betrayed us. My little trick is to just tilt the console back while you slide it in and out of the dock. There are little dock cozies you can get, but like Nintendo, just put some felt on the inside of the dock so that the hard plastic doesn't scrape against the front screen of my Switch, Jesus Christ. The Pro Controller is pretty much essential if you're ever gonna play this thing in docked mode. The Joy-Con grip just isn't gonna cut it. The Pro Controller has way bigger buttons for my grown ass hands. The D-pad is essential for certain games and will be even more essential for the eventual virtual console games. One problem I have with the Pro Controller is that there's no off button. Remember how Wiimotes used to turn on every time you'd knock into them and they'd just be dead whenever you go to use them? Well, it's similar with the Pro Controller. If you throw the controller in your bag, things will knock against it and it'll wake up your console. At least it only wakes up the Switch if you manage to hit the home button. 
It's just as easy to wake up the Joy-Cons, and since those have lights, you can see it better. Hell, just banging them, not even hitting any of the buttons. That'll wake it up. This is why it's important to leave the Joy-Cons on the Switch and put it in a case. You don't have that luxury with the Pro Controller. The fix is to just leave your console off instead of putting it to sleep, but this doesn't stop your controller from dying unnecessarily. It's a good thing that the controller has an amazing battery life. This is a down the road sort of thing, but it would be really cool to see different Joy-Cons with different button layouts. Everyone's dying for a GameCube one, but personally, I'd love one that just has a D-pad on the left side at the top where the left stick is. It would also be nice if whenever they released limited edition consoles, they also released just the Joy-Cons for those limited edition consoles. So we can waste our money on those. I would have so many Joy-Cons. We all know that the battery life isn't ideal. My solution is an Anchor Battery Power Bank. It would be nice if Nintendo made a battery case similar to the Mophie for the iPhone, or the thing that I had for my Game Gear over 20 years ago. There's currently an Indiegogo campaign for a case called Switch Charge. It claims to add 12 hours of battery life to your Switch and has a much sturdier kickstand. To join the campaign, it's a whopping $85, and I'd be very weary because it's an Indiegogo campaign. And it's no guarantee that if you give them your money that you'll ever receive a product. That's why I'd like to see Nintendo get on this or I'll wait to see it in stores, but by then the markup might be a little crazy. Last one, wild card, give me Overwatch. I know it doesn't have to be a graphical powerhouse, but like imagine how cool it would be to take Overwatch wherever you go, go to a friend's house, and then you're like, hey, let's play Overwatch, and then bam, instant land party. So what do you guys think about the things that the Switch needs? Do you have anything to add to the list? Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, all this other social media garbage. We also have a Discord community. There's a link in the description to that. We talk about a lot of Nintendo things, but we also like to share things that we make together and critique them with each other. Don't forget about Wolf Den Live every single Wednesday at nine o'clock PM Eastern time. Most important things that you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who doesn't have a Switch, but wants one and is looking on YouTube at all the stuff that could possibly be wrong with the Switch. Because that's what I do when I want a new electronic. I get really pessimistic about it. <laughs> anyway, here's a video on nine games that you can play after you beat Zelda. So games that aren't Zelda. And somewhere over my face is a 90s Nintendo Switch commercial that we made that I'm very proud of. Thank you guys very much and have a good week.